is a continuation of the test for review questions. We're picking up with question number four, which reads, Carl Ikean wants to make regular monthly deposits into his 401k in order to accumulate $4 million in 25 years. If Carl expects an annual interest rate of 8.5%, then what should Carl's regularly monthly deposit be in order to achieve his $4 million goal? Now, this one does require formula. The formulas are not provided on the test, so I would definitely tell you to write this down. The A of T represents your accumulated or your ending value. P represents your monthly deposit or the payment. R is your annual interest rate. N is the number of compoundings. And T is the time in years. And so the first thing that I want to do is I want to identify all of the different pieces um, for this problem. So if I go through and I read the question, it says Carl wants to make regular monthly deposits and he wants to accumulate $4 million. So my accumulated value is $4 million in 25 years. He expects an interest rate of 8.5%. So my interest rate is 8.5%. Now remember, that needs to be converted to a decimal. To convert any percent to a decimal, you do the decimal value divided by 100, which would be 0 0.085. Continuing that discussion, then it says Carl wants to make monthly deposits. So I'm going to have the number of compoundings per year is monthly. And there happens to be 12 months in a year. And so I'm looking for how much we should deposit each month. So basically at this point, once I've identified all the pieces, it becomes a substitution problem. You plug in the numbers into the equation. So I would have, let's see. $4 million equals the payment amount that I'm looking for times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the N times T power minus 1 divided by 0 0.085 over 12. Okay, all I've done is plug the numbers in where I'm supposed to. Okay, then I'm going to walk you through the calculations using the calculator. Okay, do them little steps at a time. Do not try to enter this whole thing into your calculator at one time. You'll wind up making a mistake. Okay, so here we go. We still have 4 million, excuse me, we still have 4 million equals the payment amount. And we're going to do these calculations on our calculator. Remember to follow order of operations. So we're going to start with 0 0.0, let me turn it on, 0 0.085 divided by 12. And we add 1. Okay, so we at this point we have 1.007083 raised to the 12 times 25, that's 300, minus 1 over 0 0.007083 repeating. Okay, so I've taken the number from my calculator screen, 0.1. 1.007083, I need to raise that to the 300th power, get the answer, and subtract 1. Okay, so at that point I have 
equals the monthly payment amount times, you get that number, um, 7.31, okay, 7.3104 divided by 0 0.007083, okay, so now we're going to do the division on our calculator. Okay, so I have 4 million equals our monthly, a monthly amount. Okay, so 7.3104 divided by, and I'm actually going to put 0 0.085 divided by 12 rather than using that approximation. Okay, so we get 1,032. Okay, so this is times 1,032.05381, I believe is what it was. Okay, and then we need to solve, oh, I got my 8 my 3 backwards. Okay, so hold on, I got my 8 my 3 backwards. Okay, so this should be 831. We're going to divide both sides by that value. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 1032.05831. Okay, on both sides. So we're going to do 4 million, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by that value. And we end up with 3. $3,875.75. And that's how much Carl should deposit each month into his 401k in order to have $4 million in 25 years. The next question asks you to write um, the expression here um, as a single logarithm. And so you have to remember the rules for dealing with logarithms. And I noticed several things here. First of all, I noticed that I have these numbers in front of the logs. The numbers in front of the logs will were actually exponents if you go back to your properties of logarithms. So I'm going to kind of throw them back up into the exponent position. So I have log of x minus 2 to the fourth power minus log of x squared minus 4 to the third power plus um, log of x plus 3 squared. And then if I work left to right, as we do when we're following order of operations, I have log of x minus 2 to the fourth minus um, x squared minus 4 to the third. Subtraction converts to division. So I would have log of x plus 2 to the fourth. Okay log of x minus 2 to the fourth divided by x squared minus 4 to the third plus log of x plus 3 squared. Okay, again, working left to right, okay, the addition becomes multiplication. So I'm going to have log of x minus 2 to the fourth over x squared minus 4 to the third times x plus 3 squared. Okay, and so when I do that and kind of simplify that expression a little bit, I end up with log of x minus 2 to the fourth times x plus 3 squared over x squared 
minus 4 to the third if you simplify it. And there it is written as a single logarithm. All right, let's see if we can do one more. This one is um, a formula. It's after T years, the value of a car originally cost $23,970 is given by the equation. They actually give you the formula that you need in the problem. So this is kind of the formula that you're going to use to plug and chug into, and it wants to know the value of the car after seven years. So basically the seven years is your T. So we're going to figure the value of the car after seven years, which would be $23,970, three-fourths raised to the seventh power. And again, at that point, I'm probably definitely getting my calculator out. We would have three divide four raised to the seventh power times 23,970, okay, all on my calculator. And so I end up with a value of $3,199.61 if you round it, okay? So the value of the car would be $3,199.61 after seven years. Guys, it's a straight plug and chug problem, use your calculator, follow order of operations.